Today we are returning again to a question that came up that I spoke to a little bit, but that I have been uh, asked for more. And I'm not, I, I think I'm going to be asked for more again, but uh, that'll have to be a podcast, not a, not a five-minute devotion. So the question is, um, what, what happens to the people who never hear about Jesus? So when we first covered this, I said the, the emphasis that we get in Scripture is not on that question, but it's on how should those who have heard about Jesus, how should you, how should I respond to the message of the gospel? Um, we also noted that there is, Paul writes in Romans 1, you know, that, that people know there's a God. We can deny, we can suppress the truth, uh, but God, uh, his invisible attributes, you know, his... His power and divine nature have been clearly seen and understood by what is made. We refer to that as natural revelation. There's a sense also, we, and we see that God has written certain things on our heart. People have a conscience. We can dull our heart. We can sort of mute our conscience. But there's, a, the, there's that argument that gets made. And then there's suggestions that as people seek the truth, right, that, that uh, more is revealed to them. But the big message of the Bible that Jesus makes is, you know, no one comes to the Father but through me. I am the way and the truth and the life. And, and that uh, there needs to be a rescuer. And this has made Christianity a very much a, a missionary faith. So Christians have for 2,000 years said, look, we need to tell people about God's love. We need to tell people about God's Son. That's what is incumbent upon us. We have the cure for cancer, right? We have the cure for sin, and we need to get out there and share it. So Paul, um, in Romans, again, Paul will, will ask, um, or he will state, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So in some ways, like, this is my answer. Right? I mean, uh, how are we to understand this? Look, the, the impetus is for you and me uh, to tell people about Jesus. That's why we, we invest a lot in missions, uh, you know, international missions, local missions. That's why we are all about saying, hey, you know, you need to invite people into a, to Alpha or a skeptic study or to come to church, or you just need to ask them what they're reading and suggest at some point that they read a Christian book with you. Uh, you know, you, you ask them how they're doing, you listen, you want to be there to, to be able to point people to Jesus when their heart is sought. So that's, that's the big answer. Now, the second question that I get asked is, well, what about those who have never heard? What about those who have never heard about Jesus? Well, look, God is just. He's not holding people uh, guilty for not doing something they know nothing about. That's not the implication, right? People aren't judged for not accepting Jesus if they've not heard about Jesus. But what we are judged by is how well we have lived up to the law, and we fall short of the law. And so people will say, you know, does God give a second chance? Does God do things beyond what he said in the New Testament? Um, that, it's not my, that's not my answer, um, I know God is just. I know God is loving. At some point, we lay down and we say, I am, I am trusting. I will have to trust God. Uh, I can't understand some of these things. I can only say what I know. So um, what happens to those who, who don't hear about Jesus? We, we, leave that to, we leave that to God, but we also are out there telling them about Jesus. Have a good day.